Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks, and it's time again. It's time for the massive Fugashima update, and uh, I'm I got a computer in my face here. All right, good. Um, guys, here's what we're going to do. We are going to go ahead, and for some reason, I'm looking at my screen right now because Murphy's Law is in effect. My HD people that Christelle is doing looks great. My uh, my live people, unfortunately, don't have my face. They have the Correct Views logo. And I'm not really sure why that is, other than the fact that we all know that Google sucks. Friends, I'm going to go into the massive Fukushima update. It's going to go on to uh, two nights. Uh, it's going to be tonight, the 3rd, and it's going to be tomorrow, that is to say the 4th, because the massive Fukushima update this month is in fact quite massive, uh, and we're going to go ahead and move right along with it. I do want to say this, I'm running a contest. Anyone up to, I, I can't cut this off at $50, ask Christelle. Do I have more than $50, Christelle? Oh, no, no. no, it's a miracle I have that. Anybody uh, up to $50, it's $5 per person. Every person that goes to the Department of Education. Hey, Christelle, do they really teach, do they really educate anybody there? Uh, I, I, I don't think so. No, no, not one person educated yet, including me, because I'm a public <laughs> school person, so uh, you kind of got it right there. Anyway, uh, if you want to go to the Department of Education and ask why did you send your dunce cap back to the correct views? Any way that you want to ask that question, if you do it on the Department of Education's Facebook page and you send me proof at uh, either uh, the correct views on hotmail.com or the mediaspeaks.com, I will donate $5 to your favorite charity and promote it on air. All right, friends, up we go to the massive Fugashima update, as promised and as hopefully waited for by all. How are my low deaf people doing? Low deaf people, for some reason, you still have only a, um, it's going to be a podcast for you. I don't know why Google is doing this to you, but it is. Um, WorldTruth.tv, U.S. sailor crippled by Fukushima radiation, speaks out on government lies. How many of you even know that uh, it's very likely that our men and our boys, our women and women, our heroes were poisoned on the U.S. Ronald Reagan when Fukushima, the meltdown, happened. For those of you just tuning in, you're like, what the hell show is this? There's this crazy long-haired guy talking about radiation. In 2011, there was a meltdown. Want me to put it in layman's terms? Want me to cut right to the chase? Pay attention to this because this is why you or someone you love will very likely get cancer. That's what this show's about. Um, how many of you know that our soldiers on the USS Ronald Reagan were poisoned in Fukushima going over to try to help? They were sent into a what was known, by the way, as at least a nuclear meltdown. We've since found out that there are th th three possibilities. A meltdown, we all know what that is. A melt through, which is when a meltdown goes through the containment vessel. That has happened. And a melt out, which is when the core comes out of the reactor, which we have found once again in the black substance as we reported last month on our massive Fukushima update, that that black yuck that was everywhere is in fact the core. And again, if you're new to all of this, uh, pay attention because the core means cancer. A U.S. Naval Administration officer severely affected by Fukushima's radiation is telling his story, further exemplifying why the U.S. government cannot be trusted to inform the public on Fukushima's danger. For those of you that don't know, I made a movie in 2012 called Bilderberg, Why It Mattered to Me, and you can show up and uh, go on my site and you'll see it free. One of the reasons it mattered to me was because when the meltdown happened, the Obama administration tested none 
of our food. Seafood coming from Japan for radiation. After a meltdown, after a melt through, after a melt out. This matters, people. Are you an Obama fan? Good. Let's pretend that George W. Bush had a meltdown happen on his watch and he didn't test any of the seafood for radiation. How mad would you have been? I'm a libertarian. I don't really like the Republicans nor the Democrats. The point is, no matter which side of this false paradigm you are on, they have both hosed you. Go look it up at worldtruth.tv. We're going to go to another one here from uh, euroactivetv.com. Uh, it was listed on InfoWars. Uh, NATO helps secure strategic infrastructure in Ukraine. Why does this matter at all? NATO experts have visited Ukraine in order to advise the government on improving the safety of nuclear power plants, gas pipelines, and other critical infrastructure amid growing violence and fears of conflict with Russia, officials said on Wednesday. In other words, the few people in the world that have a thinking part of their brain laugh to use are using it and they know about the troubles in the Ukraine and in Russia and with the U.S. and the greater part of Europe dealing with it, the Eurozone, if you will. Well, the problem is most of the people that are aware of this aren't really thinking about the... Um, What's a nuclear power plant going to do in the middle of a, a civil war, which is what's happening there? A bunch of idiots, too stupid to choose between Russia or uh, Europe. Too stupid to lead themselves. They have to puppy dog themselves to one of the two. What happens when that civil war breaks into a conflict that could jeopardize nuclear power plants? Miss Milky the Clown would be proud of me for this. How many of you can now see that the red button goes off? And that is bullshit. That is a terrible idea. Shout out to Miss Milky, who uh, brought a lot of people to the show last month. Thank you, Milky. Ukrainian ambassador to NATO, Ihor Duhov, said that NATO civilian experts had visited Ukraine last month to assess critical infrastructure such as nuclear power plants, pumping stations for gas lines, and hydroelectric plants. But Sam, you call this the massive Fukushima update, and you're talking about the Ukraine. These things, is it my imagination, or was uh, Japan bombed at the end of World War II and radiated? Now they have a nuclear issue. Um... Chernobyl melted down like a candy bar on the dashboard of your uh, car in the middle of the summer in a parking lot. And it looks like they've learned absolutely nothing. The Ukraine, Belarus, so many areas. Look up Belarus, uh, birth defects, Chernobyl. Um, Ukrainian, birth defects, Chernobyl. After you're done vomiting from how gross the pictures are, you'll see why I'm linking these together. Fukushima is going to cause birth defects. Chernobyl has caused birth defects. And now we have a country in a civil war with nuclear power plants. Does anyone besides me see a problem here? In any country, in any situation, there are plans, it says, and additional measures to protect infrastructure, including in Ukraine. So the purpose was to evaluate the performance of measures which are being implemented in the Ukraine, Dohov told reporters. Another objective that goes on was to make sure that the installations would be safe in the event of an emergency. I'm not going to go on. You can read the rest of it, but friends, listen. There is a societal meltdown going on in the Ukraine. I don't care what side you're on. 
I think they're both rather foolish myself. If I was in Ukraine, I would be a, a nationalist. That is not to say Nazi. I would be in favor of the Ukraine running the Ukraine. But you know what? I'm not Ukrainian, so I'm going to shut the hell up. But I'll say this. The reason you don't want to have nuclear power plants, among a million other reasons, is because if you do have some kind of a civil disturbance, a civil war, uh, an act of terrorism, some form of in human insanity, which we are all prone to, let's face it, it's best not to have a nuclear power plant because when the society has a meltdown, it lasts for a matter of decades, a matter of years. Nuclear meltdowns last for millions of years, and that's why you don't build them. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Uh, I've got a few more stories I want to get to, and again, I am doing this tomorrow. I do want to give a shout out to uh, Mike McLaughlin, one of the best fictional writers that we have uh, currently in the uh, Midwest today. You guys are going to want to read this guy. He's excellent. Mike McLaughlin, go to media, go to Facebook.com, look up Mike McLaughlin. You'll be happy that you did. Also, go to Amazon and Kindle.com. Yours truly has uh, written a book called The Lucky Leprechaun. Look up The Lucky Leprechaun on Amazon. Um, and look up a very brutal horror story, by the way. It's social commentary, and it's a horror story. It's called uh, A Sleep Unknowing by Samuel DeGange. That would be me at uh, Amazon or Kindle.com. It'll come right up. I have chosen to publish my horror stories. Again, many of you reading this are used to me being very political, or those of you that know Passing Time, very artistic, a band. This is horror stories. I've had them written forever, and I have now chosen to uh, go ahead and, uh, and publish them. So here we go. On to a couple of more stories here real quick. Caught on camera, fire at Fukushima, zero hedge. Yeah, this is terrible news. We are by no means experts at identifying instances of fire caught on camera under low illumination conditions, it says, but the following compressed three-minute video from the official TEPCO YouTube feed, and there is a link for it here, where one second of the clip represents 20 seconds in real time. They do that to save storage space on memory. Showing the Fukushima nuclear power plant between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. last night, it was dated the 21st of May, and particularly the segment 116 into the clip and continuing to about 30 seconds and about 16, about 6 minutes, excuse me, in the real world, certainly looks disturbing. That said, we are confident TEPCO has canned and ready for decimation Explanation would soothe the way fears, in addition to the gamma rays, the Fukushima Sagafkis is now also flambe la carte. In other words, they're making fun of it, of course. In other words, Fukushima suffered a fire at the end of May. Well, I'm sure you heard about that, though, right? You heard about it on CBS, right? You heard about it on NBC. You heard all about it, right? What, you didn't? Well, why could that be? Could it be that the media wants to hide this? Why would they hide this, you want to say? Because TEPCO is General Electric. General Electric, to the best of my knowledge anyway, doesn't really seem to like bad press very much. Hi guys, this is from PI. Japan debates radiation as uh, the magna flows... Basically, a Fukushima official was giving a press conference about how safe the radiation levels are at Fukushima. What did he get? He suffered a nosebleed, which anybody that knows anything about radiation knows is a uh, common occurrence when you have had radiation exposure. Now, I know I'm going to get dunderheads on here that leave in my comment line stories about you can get it from being punched in the nose. Uh, 
you can get it from having a stroke. Yeah, you can. Of course you can. He's in Fukushima telling you how safe it is. And he just happened to have gotten punched in the nose prior to a press conference. If you believe that, friends, you're an idiot. Last thing that I want to get to before we get into uh, tomorrow's update. Again, I'm doing this in two parts because i got so many stories. This was posted at Infowars.com. Japan to build underground ice wall at Fukushima plant to prevent leaks. Yes, I have reported on this before. But uh, Infowars is linking it. It's actually the Voice of Russia which published the story. So for those of you that don't like Infowars for whatever reason, it's only listed there. It's not their story. For some reason, people wanted to spell Alex. It's not Alex. Um, I, I've always been a supporter of Alex. Uh, Japan's nuclear regulator on Monday approved a plan to freeze the soil under the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant to try to slow the buildup of the radioactive water, officials said, according to AFP. Yes, I've reported on this before, but this is dated May 26, 2014, so this is an update on this story. The Nuclear Regulation Authority examined plans by TEPCO Electric Power Company to construct an underground ice wall at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant starting in June, officials said uh, regulatory. The wall is intended to build groundwater from nearby hillsides that has been flowing under the plant and mixing with polluted water used to cool the reactors that went into meltdown. Now basically, what this is saying, for those of you that uh, might be new to this, Fukushima, and I'm thirsty so this works, prevents a meltdown. Fukushima is here. It's on the bottom of a hill. Water is going under the plant and leaking through into the ocean. Under the plan, which is funded by the government, the firm will circulate a special refrigerant through pipes in the soil to create a 1.5 kilometer frozen wall that will stem the inflow of groundwater. Water. <laughs> so thirsty. We had some concerns, including the possibility that part of the ground would sink, one official said on condition, condition of anonymity. But there were no major objections to the project during the meeting, and we concluded that TEPCO can go ahead with at least part of the project as proposed after going through further necessary procedures. They've never done an ice wall on this scale before. This is absolutely unheard of. This has been done on temporary, temporary instances where they're building something and they need to prevent rainwater from lightly leaking over. It's never been done during anything like this. However, TEPCO may have to review other parts of the project amid fears it might affect existing structures at the plant, such as underground drains, he added. The idea of freezing a section of the ground, which was proposed for Fukushima last year, has previously been used in the construction of tunnels near water sources. However, scientists point out that neither has it been done on this scale before, nor to the proposed length of time. Again, it's never been done on this scale before. <clears throat> Coping with the huge and growing amount of water at the tsunami damage plant is proving to be one of the biggest challenges for TEPCO, that is to say GE, so don't invest in it, as it tries to clean up the mess after the worst nuclear disaster in a generation. And forget a generation, it's must work much worse than Chernobyl, and we've explained why in the past. As well as all the water used to keep the broken reactors cool, the utility must also deal with the water that makes its way subterranean water courses and mountainsides into the sea. So basically what they're trying to do is take uh, our lovely, and I'm, I'm, I'm melting down again, on a lovely reactor and build an ice wall around it to prevent it from going into the ocean. Friends, is it going to work? I don't know. But what I do know is that nuclear is a terrible idea. And I hope that if you've got nothing else 
out of this broadcast and every broadcast that I've done on the topic, be it North Korea, the United States, Iran, Japan, it's always a terrible idea to go ahead and build a nuke, a nuke plant anywhere. I'm going to do tomorrow's massive Fukushima update. I know that, and I'll be doing that tomorrow night. Christelle, you have importance. What do you have? Um, I just wanted to say, and I don't usually talk, um, a very dear friend of our band, Kevin Freeman, passed away last night, and he had cancer. And I wanted to say God bless him, may he rest in peace, and bless his family. Oh, that is not good, friends. Uh, you heard it here on the uh, Correct Views of. Many of you that don't follow the show won't know who he is. Many of you that do follow the show and the band will know exactly who he is. Guys, tomorrow's massive Fukushima update will be here right around the same time. And uh, thank you for listening, friends. Thank you, Miss Milky the Clown. Go to the mediaspeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Good night, friends. God bless.